Hello and welcome to Tech with Heart. I am your host, Michelle Calloway, and Tech with Heart is all about enlightening and empowering small business owners to embrace technologies and systems and strategies that'll help them stay competitive and relevant in a rapidly changing business landscape. Well, we're also talking today about how to protect that business by being smart and using certain tips and, and strategies when traveling with your technology. And so I brought in a special expert, a cybersecurity expert. His name is Vaslav Vinchalik, and we're gonna be talking about digital security tips for business travel. He is, uh, Vaslav is uh, about 30 years of experience building successful tech companies and running a trusted consultancy called 555VCTO, meaning CTO standing for Chief Technology Officer. He helps small business owners utilize the correct technologies to position them for growth and financial success. So well, help me welcome to the Tech With Heart stage, Basla. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. We are excited about this topic. I know a lot of small business owners are very excited to travel. They love that freedom. So let's talk first and foremost, local. Let's talk about in um, within the United States. So that is national travel, what are some tips that you would like to share with small business owners and even just families per se, as they travel within the United States with their tech, meaning cell phones, laptops, iPads, all of that jazz? Yes, uh, traveling is always the exciting part where uh, all your life is uh, you know, up in the air and you, you have to suddenly from uh, safety of your office, whether it's a home office or whether you are in the office, uh, suddenly everything is uh, changing. And um, uh, unfortunately, you always run into issues with uh, connectivity and you like to keep everything simple. And there are a few, few things to keep it in mind when, you, when you're traveling. Uh, one, uh, don't trust any public Wi-Fi which you see. You know, how many times you've been into, into an airport and you're trying to log in to, with your laptop to Wi-Fi, and the first thing you see, uh, hashtag uh, free Wi-Fi, right? That, that, that's almost always a sign that somebody is trying to convince you to log to free Wi-Fi because who would not like to get free Wi-Fi? So that's one of the things you can always look for and uh, to avoid uh, these uh, situations where uh, you get tricked into getting into systems which uh, they, they would like to uh, get to, to intercept your communication with the outside world, it's always a good idea to uh, bring your uh, personal travel router. These are small devices which you can buy on Amazon or on various other places, and they function as your own protection wherever you go. The, the setup is usually not that difficult. Uh, I've done it many times. I, I traveled uh, around the world with it. And in, in 30 seconds, you can log in with, uh, you create a protection between your laptop and the public Wi-Fi. And it doesn't matter where you are at the, uh, whether you are at the airport, uh, hotel, uh, airplane, uh, you can always set up your own uh, network and then through that connect to, to the internet. And uh, Michelle, you mentioned the uh, traveling with families. Uh, how many times you get into a hotel and the hotel uh, requires either payment uh, per person or per device, uh, then uh, you know your family start asking about the password, how to log in. Uh, nothing is easier than, again, with your own personal travel router, uh, you set up the connectivity and uh, you can mimic, as an example, the same uh, network connection uh, or the network uh, credentials like you have at home. So the moment your travel router comes up, you log in into the internet through the whatever Wi-Fi available. Every single equipment which your family has lights up 
at the same time and they are like at home <laughs> as they travel and uh, you don't include the charges you don't have to worry about uh, entering passwords about anything it's just it just works so Vaslav, for clarity's sake, when you're talking about a mobile router and you're in, let's say, the airplane, typically you can't access outside internet. You know, you're in an airplane, you're reliant upon their Wi-Fi signal to get any kind of connectivity whatsoever. Are you saying the router, the mobile router that you carry would be the thing that connects to the, the, the service that the airplane's offering? And then that way, from, from the router to your family, you all can pick up your router signal, but it's still connecting to the airplane's Wi-Fi? 100%. That's okay. exactly how I travel. And so uh, on the, the other day, I was traveling uh, to Europe uh, with, with my son, and um, uh, we both needed to work, uh, access the internet. So I, love, I light up the, uh, the personal firewall, the router, uh, I entered my credit card information. So that was from the uh, perspective from the Wi-Fi airplane, uh, uh, it, it was just one account. And then, you know, both of us could work the whole flight with no interruption. So, yes. So essentially you could connect, even in an airport, you could connect your router, which does indeed contain a firewall, which is the smartest way to protect so, but you're able to connect it to the free airport Wi-Fi, the router? Yes. Okay. So basically, guys, if you're listening and you're just, you're getting a little confused about these technologies, there's a Wi-Fi signal at airports that may be a better signal than your cell signal because sometimes too much concrete, whatever, interrupts your cell signal. So if you're at an airport and you want to tap into your public Wi-Fi, don't just do it freely without an, um, your own controller device as far as the, the signal that you actually connect your laptops or your, your cell um, phones to, that would be your little mobile router. So the router is what connects to the internet, not your tech. That way your tech, your your devices, your hard, war, hardware devices, meaning your cell phones, your, your laptops and your um, tablets, right? Would would only pick up the signal from the mobile router, not the free Wi-Fi. That way the, the signal is being able to be controlled and nobody can hack into your systems. Am I in explaining that correctly, Vaslav? Because we really need to simplify this so everybody understands. Perfectly, better than I did. <laughs> and you, you're saying you can get this online by just searching for mobile routers? That's correct, yes. Uh, there, there are, you, if you go on Amazon and you search for mobile personal travel router, you get 20, 30 devices, and then from there, you can start choosing the one which best fits uh, your needs, uh, different uh, different speed, uh, different features. It, it can also provide connectivity to some local storage. So if you carry, uh, let's say, hard drive with you, you can connect it to it. So you have external, uh, you can share external uh, disk space. So there are many features which you can get. Uh, and usually these routers are also filled with other security features, which again, depends on, on your needs. You can enable to even uh, connect securely to your office uh, or to other devices on the internet without being spied on or blocked. So this is smart. So this is different from a mobile hotspot. There are um, that th that is actually like mobile internet that you would connect to. Then you're charged based usually on your usage. This is different. This is just a a, a chokehold so that when you select that we free Wi-Fi or that hotel Wi-Fi, you're then your devices are only connected to your router rather than the actual Wi-Fi. So it's a middleman and it protects you. So moving on. So what are some other like in within the United States national travel tips for business owners. This Wi-Fi was a huge one because that does. What about plugging your devices in to USB ports for power charging? Yes, that, that, that's, a, that, that's, that's a very good question. Um, it, uh, it really de depends. Yes, you can do it. Uh, in, I, I would say in most instances, it's uh, absolutely innocent and uh, you, you can use it. Uh, personally, I, I travel with uh, a travel adapter for plug-in into, uh, into power. Uh, 
Uh, and again, I, it, it's not quite for Amazon, but it, it's the easiest way to buy it for me. Uh, it, it, it's the one which has uh, on one side, it has all the uh, plugs uh, for uh, international travel. So it has the North American, it has the Europe, Japan, uh, uh, Asia. Uh, so it's easy to then plug in everywhere you are. And this plug also has uh, a USB port to which you can then plug uh, all the charging which you need for your phones, tablets, uh, laptops, what have you. So again, I, I, I try to simplify uh, uh, the plug-in into, uh, in, in, into the power because I, I, I have, usually I, have, I carry three, four devices with me all the time. And uh, just charging them, you know, it, it's an almost full-time job, if you know what I mean. And uh, this, this, this way I will uh, very much uh, simplify that as well. So rather than depending on the uh, plugs in the hotel, because they might be on opposite side where you're working, uh, there might be not as convenient. You'd like to have everything, let's say, on your desk. Again, this is much easier. And uh, the, the cube, the power adapter, which I'm using is, uh, I don't know, inch by inch by inch small cube, which nicely fits in, into my uh, traveling bag. And um, yeah, that's how you can do it. So the reason I asked about that is because I know that some airports are providing USB charging ports. And to me, I've, I've actually read some articles that have said that you never know what you're plugging into. So um, by a USB connection to the power port to your device is potentially giving a gateway for malware or hackers or whatever. But if you are plugging into a hotel lamp base with a USB, yeah probably not as much risk there, but he, what Voslav is saying, and I agree, when at all possible, use the adapter that looks like an actual plug to be able to plug your device in to char charge that way, because there's absolutely no way that that is going to be able to allow, uh, uh, be a gateway into your device um, for anybody to do anything malicious. Correct, Voslav? Very true. That's exactly it. Being able to do business online is crucial for survival, especially during times of social distancing. So how do you survive and thrive in the sea of digital noise? It's a lot like fishing. You need to know who your perfect customer is so that you can use the right kind of lure to attract them. We help you catch your perfect customer and retain them for future sales through highly converting websites, influencer mobile apps, getting you featured in the news and on TV. Hi, my name is Jerry Bowden, U.S. Army veteran and president of Revealio Software Solutions. Our goal is to help you rise above the competition, be seen as an expert authority in your industry, and embrace technology to stay competitive for long-term success. It's more affordable than you may think. So reach out to us at Revealio.com, and together we will make your business come alive. Now let's talk about um, anything else business-wise when it comes to going through security just um, through the United States on a national level. Is there any risks whatsoever for our computers and technology, cell phones and everything to go through the security check? Uh, when I travel, uh, I, I try every, every single time I go uh, through the security checkpoint, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep direct eye contact with my, with my equipment. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I just like to keep my eye on it. So when I put the tray, I'll stay until the train, uh, tray goes through the X-ray machine. Then I go through the uh, metal detector or whatever device they have there. And then again, I, I check that the, the, uh, all my equipment is still same. Perhaps I'm too paranoid, I don't know, uh, but it's uh, years of traveling because there might be somebody behind you who suddenly says, oh, you know, hey, there's a nice uh, laptop, probably laptop is too big to, uh, to take away, but uh, uh, cell phone, you know, your iPhone, uh, Android device might be convenient for somebody to just take it uh, as, a, as a convenience. But, uh, you know, you mentioned the travel within the US and now, you know, think about it if you travel internationally, uh, especially to um, countries which perhaps have a uh, uh, hostile uh, uh, view of your passport. And uh, 
that that's where you can suddenly be exposed to other uh, form of um, uh, of a security breach when you lose sight of your equipment. And uh, if for whatever reason your equipment, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a tablet, cell phone, uh, um, uh, computer, uh, when you lose sight of that equipment and it disappears and it doesn't matter for how long, uh, you have to consider that the equipment has been compromised and you should not be using it from uh, you know, as, as easy as cloning your SIM card uh, in your phone uh, or inserting, you know, USB and uh, connecting to your computer. Uh, these uh, operations can take, you know, less than a minute. And so it doesn't look that long to you perhaps, but uh, your machine can be, your equipment can be compromised and based on uh, the level of the type of work you're doing or the, the type of company you're working for, uh, it, it, it's something you should uh, very much consider as a, uh, uh, that you know something is wrong and you should not be continuing the equipment the way you use it. So if you're traveling in abroad and you expect that something like this can happen, uh, uh, you should uh, bring, um, let's say, device uh, which has nothing personal. It's just uh, out of the box, uh, brand new device. Uh, and regardless, um, you should always have everything in cloud so you can remotely connect from wherever you are into trusted sources or resources you have. And so then it's much easier to swap machines. Uh, so if somebody takes your machine, it should have nothing on it really. Uh, and most of the information which you have should be uh, synchronized with cloud. So you actually don't care if your machine disappears on you. So that's uh, one thing to consider when uh, traveling, especially when traveling internationally. So that is in so indeed something I don't think very many business owners think about. So in traveling internationally, there are larger risks because now you're dealing with foreign entities that may or may not harbor you know, the desires to harm or be malicious. So um, basically, if you do business remotely anyway, you're probably working off of the cloud. So Voslav mentioned the cloud. So all of your business systems should be accessible via the cloud. That way, when you do have your laptop um, taken, perhaps from you at a international airport in some foreign country, and you lose sight of it, just make sure that you're not logged into any of those cloud systems in that machine when you're traveling, just to be sure that they don't have access to the data from your clouds, um, different cloud accounts. Uh, did I say that correctly, Vaslav? Yes, you did. And, uh, and that's where uh, the devices like your personal firewall comes extra handy because these are the system where you can uh, have by default set up your uh, secure connection to the cloud resources. So you are in, in charge and control of the of, of this of these type of connections. So you definitely in in, a, in a hotels or in other places and you might you know simple example you negotiating uh, some deal with a foreign entity and you are at their office and using their Wi-Fi. Uh, well you know Everybody's always trying to get some information about the, you know, about the negotiation, about the price, about the conditions. So again, these are the, the, the times where you have to be extra careful and vigilant and really make sure that you are in control of your secure uh, communication. Okay, so you, you know, this is like, wow, people are freaking out. No, I just think it's so good for us to be aware, guys, just be aware. This mobile router firewall, it sounds like a very smart thing. Um, you can even take your own mobile hotspot. That way you're relying on your own internet. So just, just like reduce, reduce risks, right? Now we talked about keeping your system, uh, your, your, when I say system, your laptop, if you're gonna travel with it internationally, make sure you just kind of keep it wiped clean of anything potentially, you know, that could harm you and, you know, log out of all your systems, online cloud systems so that nobody can access the data through opening your laptop or hacking into your laptop. And then we're gonna now move over to mobile phones. 
So when you're traveling internationally, and there's the need to use their cellular towers, right? What kind of risks are there for business owners to tap into cellular towers uh, with their mobile if they didn't have this um, mobile router? Uh, so when when traveling in abroad, uh, of course there are di different uh, uh, telecommunication providers, and they are governed by by the local laws, and uh, the local the the telcos there uh, they are required to install certain things on the phone. So if you think that you buying if you buy your uh, iPhone Android uh, in um, in Texas. Uh, the requirements are completely different than if you travel, let's say, somewhere to Asia. They, they, they each, and so these phones are perhaps uh, on the hardware level, they are identical, but everything that's installed there is pre-installed to, to, to be um, in compliance with the law, with the local laws and regulations. And it happened to me that uh, I, I was in Singapore and suddenly my phone says, your uh, uh, phone provider would like to install additional patch on your system. And that was immediately absolute no to install anything from another telco provider because I had no idea of what that patch would do to my phone, what kind of regulation suddenly my phone would be compliant with. So um, to before you travel, it's always a good idea to make sure that all, all the applications which you have on your mobile phone are up to date uh, and then disable uh, the automatic updates of your applications and your operating system and your phone. And this way, if uh, the operating system or if, if, if suddenly you get notification that certain things should be updated on your phone, Make sure that you understand what the implications are, what the, the what what the, uh, the the update is about, and if you don't feel hundred percent confident that you understand what it is, don't do that. Like how many times you were sitting in the front of a computer and you click on something and say, oh, "I shouldn't have done that." Here is doubly that don't or don't tap on anything which you don't know what it is. So these are really great tips, Vaslav. Um, just be very aware, you know, technology, um, if you're not really comfortable or super savvy with technology, if you have, when in doubt, just don't do anything. Just don't do anything until you can talk to a trusted advisor on how to manage that situation and the fact that we're talking about international travel and national travel as business owners with our technology you know this is valuable information right and we're able to do this for free because we really genuinely care and want to see small business owners be successful in this rapidly changing digital era and Václav I know you act as a fractional or a uh, so when when businesses um, do need a technology officer, you are able to come in and act as that chief technology officer without having to be a full-time employee. So I would like you to talk a little bit about that model. Just give me like a couple minutes, explain how that might benefit small business owners to hook up with somebody like you as their CTO. Um, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh... Not every organization requires full-time technology person, senior technology person on staff. That's uh, uh, overkill. It, uh, where I where I help organization is to set the the standard, the direction uh, for the technology, so it supports best uh, the business strategy, uh, the the sales force, the marketing, and uh, what. I always try to explain people that technology is really their problem and uh, try to limit the amount of technology using in your organization. Uh, and the same thing like you mentioned, uh, Michelle, that uh, there are so many risks uh, around us. The less technology you have, uh, the easier it is to maintain 
it is easier to understand what it is, what it does, and uh, you don't have to learn that much thing. And it usually does uh, 80, 90% what you would normally need. So uh, I, I always try to minimize the amount of technology the organization is using. And you're referring to software though. Can you just, I mean, technology is a very broad term. It could be hardware, software, right? Are you referring to mostly software? Uh, actually, you, you are correct. Uh, mostly uh, software of various type of applications, but even in, in terms of hardware, uh, it, it, uh, to keep it simple, standardize the type of uh, laptops or type of computers you have in the office. Uh, standardize the type of operating system you have in your office because that will simplify the maintenance. Uh, it will simplify the uh, what, what people have to learn and just simplify, simplify. It, it's you will gain more money or more efficiency from simple. Uh, you'll be able to better uh, focus on your business than on the technology because. The more you buy into uh, not in hardware but various type of applications, it will cost you more. The the benefits are usually marginal, and or serve very small group of people, and it, it's just not helpful, right? You 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 can do uh, less. Uh, definitely more you can do with with less uh, technology, and no. you minimize the surface attack. On, on your whole infrastructure, on, on your organization. Thank you, Vaslav. How can people reach out to you? Um, they can come uh, to my website, 555bcto.com. Uh, and there's an email address, there's phone, uh, there's a form which they can fill and uh, contact me there. Wonderful. Is there any thoughts or phrase that you would like to leave with um, those that are tuning in right now regarding just being safe while you're traveling? Keep it simple, keep it safe, and don't click on anything you don't know what it is. Thank you so much, Vaslav. So if you're tuning in right now and you would like to reach out to Vaslav, please take that moment to do so. He's a friendly fellow. He's here to help. He really cares about your business success. And Tech With Heart is a nonprofit organization. And so if you are a small business owner who wants to hang around other innovative yet heart-centered entrepreneurs, please come check us out at techwithheartnetwork.com. Join our community for free or upgrade to be a, an influencer within our community and get your business and yourself listed as an influencer so that people can turn around and hire you to speak at their events. And if you are um, just you know, feeling like, wow, this is just all above my head, this is a safe space, techwithheartnetwork.com. Really do, we really want to hear from you so that we can empower you, enlighten you to make better informed decisions. So check us out, techwithheartnetwork.com and uh, give us a like, subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate you tuning in here today. Here's to your success. Your story needs to be seen and heard, and your brand needs to be revealed. Revealio elevates purpose-driven businesses into the spotlight through video storytelling, augmented reality video marketing, and professional website design. Get discovered online or in the news. Be featured in national magazines or host your own TV, podcast, or live radio show. Together, we make your brand come alive. All it takes is Revealio. Visit Revealio.com to get started today. Minority and service-disabled veteran-owned.